I want to take a break from talking about the meaning and significance of the miracles to clarify something about what the Bible means by miracles. Importantly, the New Testament doesn't use by itself the word terata, which means a magical marvel or a wonder. Instead, it also refers to acts of power, dunamis, and signs, samaya. The word dunamis, uh, just as a bit of trivia, gives its, um, itself to the word dynamite, which when Alfred Nobel invented it, he gave it the word dynamite from the Greek dunamis because it's very powerful. So that's a, a handy way of remembering what it means. So the New Testament uses these words, acts of power and signs. So the wonders that Jesus performed were extraordinary, but they prompt a response. Importantly, the attention of people who encountered the miracles of Jesus, their attention was not drawn to nature and its violation, but their attention was drawn upwards to God. To explain that, we need to clarify the ancient mindset. The people of the time of Jesus did not know about the laws of nature. Modern science was not going to develop for at least another millennium. At the time of Jesus, all of reality was seen as miraculous. Life and death, the sun rising, a seed becoming a plant were all wonderful. They were all miraculous. Everything that happened in the world was seen as the work of God. So what made the, the actions of Jesus that we call miracles, what made them special was not that they were wonders, but there were signs of power that drew people's attention to God. They drew people to glorify God and to believe in God and his agent, Jesus. That's a very important point because people think today of, of miracles as events that prove God, that violate the laws of nature, that somehow occur outside of our world of experience. But instead, the wonders of Jesus were acts of power that indicated, first of all, that he was acting under the authority and power of God, and they were signs. They were signs that drew people to ask questions. What sort of man is this that can control nature? Who is this that can heal the sick or raise the dead? So I want you to bear in mind that very, very important point. I don't like to use the word miracle in relation to Jesus. It's a word that, that carries all sorts of intellectual baggage from the 21st century and modern culture in general. Instead, I prefer to refer to them in the biblical way of signs and wonders. Signs of the power of Jesus, signs of the authority of Jesus, and signs of what God wants to say to us through Jesus Christ. So this is another question I would like you to ask yourself whenever you read the miracle stories of Jesus. These miracles, these signs and wonders are not performed for the sake of spectacle so that people go, wow, there might be an element of that. But more importantly, what do these miracles, what do these signs and wonders say about Jesus and about God and his relationship? With us. So let's turn to something about miracles in general. And the reality is that miracles may involve the extraordinary, the marvelous, and the amazing. But in the case of Jesus, the meaning of the miracles is only clarified by the preaching that accompanies them. In other words, signs and wonders, miracles if you prefer, when they don't have an explanation, they're devoid of meaning. And the Second Vatican Council has a great perspective on this. So in, in De Verbum, the document on divine revelation, we have, I'm going to quote the council here. This plan of revelation is realized by deeds and words having 
and inner unity. The deeds wrought by God and the history of salvation manifest and confirm the teaching and realities signified by the words, while the words proclaim the deeds and clarify the mystery contained in them. In other words, the actions give substance to the words and the words clarify the actions. So again, we read the miracle stories of Jesus not just to go, wow, the way that we would at a, a, a magic show, but to look for the, the words or the deeper meaning behind those actions. It's also important to remember that these signs and wonders or miracles occur in God's initiative. One of these miracles do doesn't just happen out of the blue, but they are God's personal communication a communication in which the, the miracle, the sign and wonder, is a sign. It's something that, that gives physical form, if you like, to a message. And it's also important to remember that a miracle can have many interpretations. That's at least partly due to human choice. Some people read into the, 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 the miracles of Jesus, that he's the Son of God, that he has divine authority. Others at the time of Jesus, said it's because he has evil power in him. It's important to remember that a miracle is an act of God that's encountered through faith. And a miracle doesn't compel faith. It challenges faith and strengthens it, but it can't force faith. Because if faith is forced, it's no longer faith. It's knowledge. It's certainty. And again, you might want to think about that. Are the miracles, the signs and wonders of Jesus, there for proof, for certainty, and sure knowledge? Or are they there to foster belief and faith?